so hi guys this is a voiceover as i'm walking to the library in wales this is the first time i've come back to the caravan this weekend because snow stopped play earlier in the month finally i'm back the caravan is opened burst pipes are mended and the key thing i was really excited about doing was walking to the library so i'm taking you with me as a vr to meg over at rose honey ritual who did a library haul so you can see we're walking past the cliff railway can you see the carriage coming down the cliff it's really fun to go up and down the cliff railway i should be doing that when i come back with the kids Meg did the most lovely video of her library haul and I just really wanted to join in. After a no buy year I realised how lovely it is to shop the library. So I thought I would take you on my very first walk down to the seafront on my way from my car. Isn't this absolutely glorious? So we're coming down to the promenade and you can see there are white bars around the promenade and there is a funny tradition for this one of these white bars and you'll see the paints all scuffed off it because the tradition is called kicking the bar and it's supposed to be lucky to kick the bar so i'm coming up to kick the bar for the new season and um it's a strange tradition they think that possibly the female university students used to live at this end of, of the promenade and the boys would kick the bar to get their attention another one is that it would give you luck in your exams or the university students were encouraged to walk the length of the promenade for fitness to stave off tb and kicking the bar was a superstition to help you stay healthy but it's a superstition that still carries on you can see people in Aberystwyth with kicking the bar so let's start the season doing that and it's the most glorious morning after a stormy night there is still a bit of sea mist around and you can see a lot of the beaches up on the pavement which you often get here after quite blowy nights which we definitely had here last night In front there you can see the war memorial and some of the ruins of the castle sticking up. That's where the castle is over there. Um, and you can see it's quite a long promenade. It loops all the way round, all the way down to the lighthouse by my dog walking beach. So it is a rather spectacular seafront. And you can see it's got the typical seafront houses look how much of the beach has been thrown up last night it was definitely a stormy night now i am crossing the road to take us one street back now away from away from the beach because i want to show you some of the lovely houses i walk past and yes there is a red post box I almost walked past that without thinking and then I thought some of you guys might actually like to see it so there you go so this is one street back and I think some of these old houses and old buildings on these further back streets are just stunning like this huge building I don't even know what this is used for anymore of course as with any town you get the graffiti so the splendor and the graffiti although that kind of looks like an artwork in its own right i love all the moss and the plants growing up little mini ecosystems all around the edges of these old buildings so this is my normal walk down to the library past all these lovely seaside homes and there are some stunning homes down here it's really nice to see the the progress of the gardens and how all the gardens have gone back to sleep although those peonies out 
think the peonies are beginning to bloom that house in front i've just pointed to is so stunning it's just been revamped as holiday apartments but look at the old balcony around it a few years ago this was rusty and black and falling apart and they've done the most amazing job reconditioning it and just revamping this whole building which I've always loved in my whole time coming to Aberystwyth I've always loved this building so this is the garden do you remember that was full of flowers in the summer obviously that's sleeping at the moment and here we are finally this building here is the library and isn't it completely stunning Ah, oh, it feels so good to be back. I really miss this place when the season closes. And look what's upstairs. There's a library sale going on. This is so bizarre because I was only recently talking on the phone to my friend Shannon who'd bought loads of books in a library sale. And I was saying how I really wish that there were library sales near us. And in I walk... And there's a sale, all these books are for sale. 50 pence for paperbacks, a pound for hardbacks. And there were just some amazing old books up here. Look at this. So my mind is thinking sketchbooks, altered books, inspiration books. And I did a meditation this morning with a horse in. And look, horse treks. That is a synchronicity right there. So I am beginning to hyperventilate with excitement at this point with so many sale books to look at. Isn't this just wonderful when you walk into a library and, and this is going on? Although it does make me sad thinking that these are all books that people must never have taken out. So I've made a selection of books to buy and now I'm in the fiction section actually looking at books to take out and to put on loan although I don't know how I'm going to get everything I've brought back to the car I'm going to have to pull up in their car park and ask if that's okay so this was one I was interested in, in possibly taking out it's just so lovely isn't it to be pulling books out and literally to be shopping a library there is no difference than being in a bookshop so this corner is all um, science fiction these caught my eye I've never read this author before Stephen Baxter and these sounded absolutely brilliant. I read through and realised that they were missing the first one in the series. So I went to the desk and asked the guy if the, they'd got the first one in anywhere. He said they did, but it was on loan. Did I want to reserve it? But I said, no, let the person reading it read it in peace and I'll just check next time I'm in. So those went back, but those are those are on my radar for next time so this is upstairs this is where all the non-fiction is you can see it's a really a small library there's there's downstairs with the fiction this is all the non-fiction now this end cap of books often i think it's where they put all the books that they've got no idea where else to put them and i often find a ton of books on here that i love um i don't know quite what that says about me so there was a book here about a the Lucifer project, which is finding out about how people turn evil, which I'm going to get out another time. But there's witchcraft history on here. You can see what I mean. There's all sorts on this end cap. So I started there. So we're not in the library anymore. Well, we kind of are. This is the National Library of Wales, which is literally just up the hill. I could walk from one library to the other. And with a car full of books, which I'll show you at the end, I decided to stop off here. Now, you can't actually take any books out of this library, but there are the most glorious, huge reading rooms where you can book sessions to, to do study and to read. And it's the most wonderful building. This is where they house the Nantios Cup. 
but I thought I would stop off here on the way back just to go and visit the gallery and see what exhibitions they have. It's got the most wonderful view down over the town and it's a, just a lovely building. So I can see from the staircase in front of me that the exhibition has changed from the last time I was here because they always do a sort of decoration on the staircase of whatever exhibition is on. So it looks like a print exhibition, a woodcut exhibition possibly. That is going to be really interesting because I love woodcuts and prints. It kind of ties into my love of ink work. So you can see how, how sort of an old fashioned library feel this building has. It's a maze, <laughs> I get lost in here, it really is. You turn this way and that and get lost. I'm actually going the wrong way here and it takes me a minute to realise. Okay, I'm turned round and I'm going up the right stairs now. So the gallery space is right at the top and it is the most glorious, huge room. And yes, it is a it was an exhibition full of woodcuts by oh my gosh, there were all sorts of Augustus John, um, Dura, there was Rembrandt in here. It was just amazing, along with these modern woodcuts as well, which I just thought were absolutely inspirational. It was just the most incredible exhibition. So it's the evening time now and I'm back in the van. Just got back from a nighttime walk on the beach with the dogs and I thought I would show you the books I got. I hope this isn't going to be too wobbly because this table's quite wobbly. So first of all, let me show you this pile of books here, which are the books that I actually took out of the library. So these aren't from the library sale. These are books that I actually took out. So I've got this first one, 4,000 weeks, time and how to use it. Can you believe 4,000 weeks is how many weeks you have to live if you live to 80? Isn't that scary? <laughs> uh, um, so this is a book by Oliver Berkman. Now, what he does in this book, I've actually started reading this. It's really good so far. He kind of talks about time productivity, but not as in like how to do more jobs. It's literally how to let go of that idea to accept that you're never going to get all the jobs done and how to actually like start living. So I was really interested in that one. This one is a fiction book. Uh, Tangerine, the girl on the train meets the talented Mr Ripley under the Moroccan sun. Unputdownable, it says. So this looks like a sort of mystery thriller in, set in Morocco. Um, this is another fiction. This is called The Maiden. Oh, this is another thriller. Um, set in Cambridge. And it's about like a secret web under the scenes and killings and it says we all keep secrets even from ourselves. So I've got a couple of fiction books. Then upstairs you saw me in the non-fiction. They have some really nice nature books in the library. Um, this looks like a really lovely book. This is by somebody called Gary Ferguson. Master Lessons of Nature, What Nature Teaches Us About Living Well in the World. So it's about the eight master lessons of nature. So that looks really interesting. And then a real life haunting book. This I think I'm going to scare myself with this one, The Haunting of Alma Fielding. It's by Kate Summerscale, a true ghost story. And I think it's based on a true story set in London, 1938. Alma Fielding. So obviously there's some sort of haunting going on. And um, uh, yeah, I just really fancied a ghost story. So there we go. And then also from upstairs, I found this book. Look at that beautiful cover. Fairies, A Dangerous History by Richard Sugg. And this is a book all about the fairy world and 
the history of fairies and how um, how the history of fairies has developed through time. An instant fairy classic, one of our best books on the supernatural past and present. Just thought that sounded really good too. And then look at this beauty. This is the last one that I found. It's so beautifully made. And it's Rosalind Curvin's The Arthurian Legends. And it's just all the stories of King Arthur, but just with some beautiful layouts in here. I mean, look at this book. Isn't, doesn't it look gorgeous? Look at the, the illustrations in here. Just stunning. So I just thought that looked like a really beautiful read. And it's just been nice to familiarise myself with the Arthurian legends, with something as beautiful as that. So those were the seven books I got out on loan. Now, I also bought an absolute ton of books from that book sale. Um, the guy, when I took them all to the desk, he charged me £10 for all of these. So I spent £10. First one is a biography, The Reluctant Redhead. Ulla Ned Phillips. Now, she lived a life where she lived in Wales and also America. And she knew she just lived a life surrounded by lots of artists and poets and singers and actors. Dylan Thomas. It was the link to Dylan Thomas, really, that made me interested in reading it. And it's just her life story. And I just thought it looked like a really interesting read. So that was one I bought in the sale. And look at this little beauty, Collins's Tree Guide, a complete field guide to the trees of Britain and Europe. And this looks absolutely fantastic. Look at this. So it's got all the different trees. It's fully illustrated all the way through. It's got a teeny tiny bit of water damage going on. But I'm okay with that because I often bemoan my lack of knowledge of the trees and what trees are what and is this an oak or is this or is this a birch? But it's got them all in here. Look at this. Just thought that was fantastic. And it's right chunky monkey, look. So the most complete, fully illustrated field guide to the trees of Britain and Northern Europe. Over 1,500 trees described, the biggest number ever included in a single volume field guide. So that was a great little find. Another sort of historical novel I found was this hardback. Now, this is Bernard Cornwall's heretic it's the grail quest so any book whether it be historical fiction or a non-fiction book at the minute is interesting me to do with the grail so i picked that one up now you saw when i was looking for books that stephen baxter's books caught my attention but they didn't have the first one in the series and it was out on loan so i left it but then in the book sale I found this hardback book which is also Stephen Baxter and this is a joint writing between Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter I think it says there are worlds waiting all it takes is one small step now I've never read any Stephen Baxter his books I was looking at earlier were in the science fiction aisle. I have read Terry Pratchett. I've read all the Discworld books. Well, some of the Discworld books. Love Terry Pratchett. Haven't read him for ages. So this just looked fascinating. So I picked that one up. Okay, this great big non-fiction. You saw me flick through this. The Great Horse Treks of the World. Now... All this morning, I spent two hours finishing off the sword, quest for the sword in the Hallow Quest with the Arthurian Tarot. 
and through reading back on notes and some of my meditations images of horses white horses in particular in water kept coming into my meditations and i wanted to try and do some collage work on it so this book with all of its images of horses i just thought gave me a lot of subject matter to either work into the book or to cut the pictures out of the book um that's bizarre actually i'm going to go back to that page look there's a deer on there and that was also in one of my that was also in one of my meditations so that's quite freaky but like things like this with these white horses i just think it's going to be quite useful um yeah so that i couldn't i couldn't leave i mean look at that image it's going to be so brilliant for collage just as a resource book or i might actually work into the book i haven't quite decided yet how i'm going to do it but that just seemed well timed another non-fiction book is this one now i love doing artwork with maps and I've done some magic pictures with maps before. I do actually want to start doing more. And when I picked this book up and wondered what it was all about, I was literally blown away by the illustration throughout it. Not only like the woodcut prints, but there's just so many beautiful old maps. I mean, look at this. Look how gorgeous that is. And like the drawings, old fashioned drawings of these sailboats. I mean, look at this. And it's just rammed full with just the most gorgeous illustrations. I mean, even that looks like a map, doesn't it? They're, they're almost mod. They're so old fashioned, they're modern. I mean, look. Look at that outfit. That's pretty darn cool, isn't it? Look. So this one, this one just blew me away. I just love all of these diagrams. I mean, it's absolutely rammed full with diagrams and boat pictures and old maps. I mean, look, all the way and all the way through it goes. I mean, look at that. So this one, I just loved. This was a no-brainer to pick this one up. fantastic and old like documents oh i loved it so that is the armada could not leave that behind and then i picked up a few incredible children's books i love children's picture books just not only because the stories are gorgeous, but the artwork and the illustration. I think if I see any really amazing kids picture books in charity shops or in like sales like this, I am always tempted. And these were just so cheap. In fact, I think these ended up being not even charged for. So the I picked up two books by Stephen Mackey. Um so I picked up me, Mickey and Mickey and the Moon Blossom. Oh, and the the illustrations in these books are just so stunning. And look at this. I just could not leave them behind. How gorgeous are these look at this and it's even got an octopus in it's just like impossible to leave it behind so that's one mickey book and then this one is mickey and the moon blossom i hope i'm pronouncing that right Again, just stunning illustrations. I mean, look at that. Look at look at the work in that image. It's just incredible. 
I'm sorry guys about the reflection. I've got the light right above me and nowhere else to film. So I hope you can still see well enough. So those were two books by Stephen McKay. And then I found this book, Eric Carr. Now I love Eric Carr's illustrations. And I haven't ever actually seen this book. It's actually a hardback. But I think just some of this patterning and the way he collages papers together, it's just really inspirational, his artwork. And it's just inspiring, I mean, to, to pull out a book like this and to even be inspired to make backgrounds in your art books. They're just really, they're really good for inspiration. I mean, look at the texture in that for woodland. And then these gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations. So I literally could not leave that one behind. And then the last of the kids' books is Geraldine Mc... McHeo, is it? Illustrated by Maria Nelson. And this is Pity Pat Saucer of Moon. And again, I bought this for the wonderful sort of ink and wash artwork and stippling. I mean, I love stippled artwork. But I just loved the ink and and the patterns of the ink on top of these sort of collage and wash backgrounds. I just think it's a really nice mishmash of, of sort of art styles. I mean, look, you've got the collage in the sail and then you've got sort of bold areas of colour and then texture with the ink. It's just really nice. Again, just a really nice inspiration for artwork so i couldn't leave that one behind as well okay the next one is a jeffrey smith's world of flowers book again it's one that i could use for collage for cutting out pictures or for working in for like painting around and for using the flowers as a base for the start of a page which is what I think I will do I think I'm going to use this as an altered book because it's just really lovely to have flowers as a base especially seen as I'm going to be hopefully finding out a little bit more about flowers today i think was it peonies that we walked past today on the way to the library i think it was i think some of these peonies were out um so yeah just just some lovely illustrations in there look at that and then here i have a sampler quilt workbook and i've never ever done any quilting before but i just really liked the idea of of having a go at doing some quilting the kids are all growing out of their clothes every year i've got a selection of some of their favorite clothes what to do with all that fabric that means so much well it might be that this is an inspiration to start sewing with some of it who knows and then another map book again it could be one to either keep as a book and use for walks or want to actually cut out the images and to use the maps but I mean it's quite nice to have a coastal walk book I don't know yet I'm going to have to look at this book and see I mean a lot of this information you can get online can't you but I just really I thought it was just a really lovely book now the last three are really old this is the Minerva Press 1790 to 1820 and I bought this book because of the paper. Oh my gosh, if I show you it this way, can you see what the paper's like? It feels like really old sort of parchment paper. I mean, this was printed in 1939. Not quite sure what it was but the paper is glorious it feels like some old 
incredible sort of old grimoire or something it's got that smell of old books as well um it's got a few illustrations in like this um just a, just it's just a really strange little book but my thought is to use this as a base for i don't know a sketchbook or something i just really loved it um almost to do some some pen and ink drawings in like at the exhibition i saw at the library of wales and another old book look at this the studio volume six i mean this is absolutely stunning um and it is an illustrated magazine of fine and applied art volume six and all the way through it's just I've got all of these this information about different artists and different art styles and it's just fascinating i just think it's a really beautiful book There's all sorts in here. So it was definitely one that, I mean, just for the end, just for the outside of the book, it was worth picking up. But when I flick through and see just this beautiful old encyclopedia of art, I mean, who knows what new artists I'm going to discover in this. Oh, look at that. So I just thought that was completely fascinating. And then I went looking through all the boxes, trying to find some more. And this book, oh my gosh, it's so heavy, this book. And it is the Studio Volume, what's that, 49. This was printed in 1930. It's got on the spine of this one. So you can see it's another one of these, printed in 1930. Oh, you've got these amazing sort of tissue paper covers, which is incredible. And again, it's a similar thing. It's just full of art history and different artists. I mean, look at this, you've got windows. How gorgeous is that? What a book. I mean, these two books, I'm, I'm not going to do anything but keep these as treasured books and like flick through them. Um, because they're, I mean, they it would be, it would be sacrilegious to like cut into them or to adapt them at all because they are just beautiful historical documents of art um I, I just it blew me away that these books were just sitting in boxes just waiting for somebody to come along and buy them for for pennies so those two huge studio volumes are i think really really special alongside this incredible old sort of, it almost feels handmade the paper in these it's incredible so that's it guys that is my library haul i hope you enjoyed that i hope the table wasn't too shaky every time i move the whole caravan shakes anyway um but thank you meg for the inspiration of library hauls um, it was Meg that inspired this. I will link down below Meg's video. Um, I've got loads of reading now, haven't I? How exciting is that? So thanks, guys, so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.